welcome to Full Circle. I'm Ann Maines and I am so glad you are here. Okay, as the only married girl on the couch, I have to say that from what I see, the dating world is a wild and woolly place. And I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, Seriously. Well, we're all like, well. I've had some really interesting dates. Actually, I've actually entertained people for an entire evening just with my funny and tragic date stories. And I actually, in university, was voted the girl most likely to go out with a stranger. <laughs> really? <laughs> because they were always having these hmm. date setups. Get your roommate a date. Mm -hmm. And I was always, like my friends, I didn't want to go. And they'd be, please, come on, Cheryl. And I'd be such a people pleaser. I'd end yeah. up saying yeah. yes to all of them, which was just, most of them were tragic. That's your first yes. mistake right there, well, saying yes to all of them. Don't you think? I think the dating world is strange and scary, especially different stages and seasons of life but I also think what's the strangest is when you start dating or friends of yours ask you out and you're usually just like friends and pals but then all of a sudden you realize it's a date you know like they all of a sudden oh. pull out your chair or they pay for you when before it was like hey buddy it's like Dutch you yeah. know we're splitting yeah. it so yeah. that has been very very different right like you know so it is a scary place I think for a lot of people but you know what alas it wasn't always that way. In fact, oh. we did some digging and we found some dating rituals from the past that just bespoke of a kinder, safer place. Really? <laughs> yes. Are you really, really going there? Really. Okay, but Melinda, I know the one that you have mm. is not really kinder and safer. It's just more strange. And it's gross. Yeah, go so ahead. Go ahead. In the day in Austria, women used to attend balls and dances and put pieces of apple under their armpits as they danced. And <laughs> Was this like, um, you know, like de a deodorant? For deodorant? For deodorant, or, deodorant just, yeah. No, just to put it under, and they would dance with That these. would be a weird dancing. Cause right. You, yeah, okay. And when she saw a man that she liked, she would take the sweet, stained oh, apple brother. from under her armpit and oh. give it to the man <laughs> that she liked. And if he took it and took a bite, there was interest, and they could continue on in their possible relationship. You know, you have the whole crew really yeah. grossed out right now. All the guys, that, are all the guys are saying, "I don't care how much I like yeah. that. I'm not <laughs> buying that <laughs> apple. You can keep your apple, baby. Yeah. That's okay." Well, who comes up with that, you guys? I know, like, but that is an actual it's dating ritual. It's a dating ritual from that they do. Way back some when. cultures believe that sweat is like an aphrodisiac or something. I guess, you know? and if he is willing to take a bite of that. That's I don't know if apple. I want him if yeah. he's willing to, no, no, thank you. It's commitment, Anne. Yeah. Yeah. See, my example is it doesn't give that much commitment, okay. really. Okay. So okay. in Victorian times, of if, if a man uh, liked a woman, he would send her a lovely pair of gloves. Mm -hmm. And if she returned his affections, she would wear those gloves to church. And then he would oh. see her in church wearing see, his gloves. that is so much more genteel. And she would know that I he like isn't. That. But what he would know she's there interested. there many suitors and there was many gloves? Or they sent the same pair of gloves. Exactly. What if oh. she's really oh. popular? Oh. Uh -oh. What if she likes three of them? Exactly. One I on each. Do. One she on each only has two hands. hands. And That's hold the third up. You know what? Next she starts sending women gloves. I like that idea. And then you'll wear it on full circle? Winter gloves. I don't know, but that's a uh, one. I like yeah. that one. Okay, well, the one I have also goes back to Victorian days, uh, and it was the rules of courting, okay? So if a man came to court you, ladies, he would have to wear gloves, and he could only stay for 15 minutes. Wouldn't oh. he have to wear gloves? Like, he has, has to, to wear gloves. In 15, in 15 minutes, minutes. No, no, each courting visit only lasted 15 <laughs> minutes, but you'll like this. Okay. He had to bring a gift. Ah, oh. so, oh, but, but it couldn't be an expensive gift. It had to be flowers or candy because an expensive gift was inappropriate. So gloves, mm -hmm. a gift, 15 minutes, 15 gone. minutes, he is out the door. And you could just see suitors all so, day oh, long. Yeah, Every 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? I love that. Yes. Bring back the well, Victorian Well, you know what? Era. No, no. <laughs> the latest trend in dating <laughs> is virtual dating or online dating. Some of us around here know a lot about that. Um, <laughs> on today's show, we're going to meet the co-founder and president of Christian Cafe and get the inside scoop on its growing popularity. That is coming up right after this. Don't you go anywhere. Married or single, stay-at-home mom or CEO, all women were designed by God to be in relationship. Join the Sofa Sisters this fall as Full Circle presents an exciting women's conference. Vibrant relationships with God, family, and community. Guests include best-selling authors Bill and Pam Farrell with worship and music by Steve Bell. Oakville, October 15th, London, November 12th, and Barry, November 19th. Visit FullCircleTV.com to order your tickets, download posters, and invite your friends. Thank you. 
And I just want to remind you that if you missed the information on the conferences, you can just go onto our website at fullcircletv.com, and you can even register, uh, call the phone number on the, on the website, and find out how you can get tickets, because we really do want to meet you at one of our conferences. Okay, well, for the first time ever, statistics show that the number of single adults slightly outnumbers the number of those married. For that reason alone, navigating the dating world for many is just plain old scary. Enter online dating. And one of the most popular online dating sites is Christian Cafe. Its co-founder and president, Sam Moorcroft, joins us now. Sam, welcome to Full Circle. Thanks for having me. I got to say, when I was mentioning in the office that you're coming, they're like, the founder of ChristianCafe.com is in the building. I'm like, <laughs> he is. So you have quite the reputation, or the site definitely does, Sam. Well, thank you. Well, thank you know what's you. so cool about it is that I did a story on you 11 years ago for a show I was producing at the time, and you were one year old. And that was in 2000. And, and internet dating was still, in Canada especially, still kind of sketchy. And I remember I was grinding you a bit over the years. How do you know you're safe? What if he's a stalker? <laughs> you know, and you had actually given me a year free subscription. And I, I wasn't really into it at the time. And I, and I have to say, you know, I'm so sorry for that because I have been internet dated and I have met my wonderful current boyfriend through an internet site. So, you know, sorry I gave you such a hard time back then. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. You yeah. had to spend a lot in those early days, didn't you? We did. We did. It was, it was a very different world back then compared to now. Um, um, in fact, I, you almost wouldn't recognize the world as it was. People are like, you're doing what? Or they'd ask how you met and they would tell you vaguely unless you really pushed them, they wouldn't mention it. And nowadays it's not, are you online dating? It's which site? So why, do times are totally why do you think there's been that change, Sam? Because I do remember in the day where people did meet their mate online and they would be like, I met them at a concert. Like it was, <laughs> and you knew, and I was like, did you really? Well, kind of. But now it seems like people are very open to say. What, what's changed in the last 10 years? Um, I think it's because you've had 10 years of people using various dating sites and it's funny because in my early years a lot of friends of mine were on it but they wouldn't tell me and I would find out later when I was approving photos because we approve photos for various reasons and I would notice this friend, this friend, this friend, this friend, this friend, so everybody was doing it and I think just eventually people start realizing that the people using it are entirely normal and well adjusted and then you've got the Facebook and Twitter generation and, and everybody's online and we've got the progress of technology and there's so many good stories coming out of it you know, the media sometimes focuses on the negative stuff, but there's been so many positive uh, relationships that have resulted that people just, I mean, wh why are we hiding? There's nothing to hide anymore. Everybody's doing it. So what's there to hide? So ChristianCafe.com, how many members do you have online right now, do you think? It's funny, when we were speaking earlier, uh, Cheryl, it was, uh, you'd mentioned that uh, back in 11 years ago, I was bragging about the fact that we had 15,000 uh, people on the website. Wow. We've had over 2 million. Um, oh, of wow. which about 200,000 are Canadians in the last uh, 12 years now. Wow. So it's, it's, I mean, we can't even count the amount of success stories that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, we've got over 1,500 success stories just posted, and that's just people emailing us, and they represent a fraction. So clearly, it's working for a whole lot of people. And I have to say the difference is back in those early days, um, some of the people the options so like I have to be honest I, my, my good friend and I used to look at the site and look at the men and we go this is why we're still single <laughs> <laughs> so scary you know like there always is in the dating world right people that, that you just women too they look at the girls and say the oh, same thing. probably <laughs> and you know now with so many more people doing it like you said it's so much more mainstream and I'm not saying it wasn't but you know like there's just you just sometimes you get discouraged right by by your options and and now there's just so many great options you know on the sites because so many people are involved I think you like you have that sort of early adopter movement, and maybe they're a bit, um, what's the politically correct term, geeky, a bit nerdy. I, I don't know. Yeah. The ones that jump on board to the latest thing, whereas now, like you say, it's mainstream. So it's just like the same crowd you'd meet after church. But but that's the question, though. How come you're not meeting those people after church? Like, why is our sphere of connecting people, you know, with friends or family, not working in? people are going online because that's the assumption like you're not meeting them in your sphere so you're going online because it's a it's a bigger pool I think it's like the double-edged sort of technology as technology progresses it brings us closer together you know through Skype through cell phones mm -hmm. through the internet but at the same time it, it isolates us in a way mm -hmm. and I'm reminded of a cartoon I saw years ago where it's uh, people at a web cafe and they're all sitting in a circle and they've got computers in front of them and the little bubble above the head of one of them says I'm so lonely Mm -hmm. But there's 20 people in the room, but none of them are talking to each other. They're talking to the computer. And I think it's uh, also a function of busy lives. You know, you have so many people out working. After you've reached your college, university years, wh where do you connect with people? 
Like, how do you do mm -hmm. it beyond your church? Exactly. Maybe your sports club. Are you going to meet Christians in the grocery you know, store line? Are you going to meet at a library, a secular club? Probably not. It's tough meeting people after the service when you're having cookie, you know, cookies and coffee. Mm -hmm. You got five minutes, everyone's rushing in and out. Do you approach that young lady or do you feel, I don't know, and vice versa? What do you do? Yeah. And at my church, there was like 40 people that I was going to for years. You know, there's one single guy. And every time we talked, everyone would be like, ooh, the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he was there because yeah, yeah. he knew the, the odds. Book the hall. Book the hall. Exactly. Okay. Now, as the only um, married among us here. Uh, married. You're married, too, married and too. I want to talk <laughs> about that later as well. But I wasn't at the time that we did the interview. I know. That's true. I have to admit, I'm totally in the dark about the whole online dating service. So ChristianCafe.com, if, say, I was a single person, there's a monthly membership fee that you must, like, you have to submit all your information. Is there an approval process or everyone's approved? Or well, how is that? Basically, the way it works is you come in and we give everybody a free trial. We treat you as if you're paid with a couple of minor exceptions. You can do everything that a paid person can do and we give you up to 10 days for free to try it out and basically see see what you like you create an account of of yourself multiple choice and then written questions as much or as little as you want and then you can interact with other people live through chatting through instant messaging you can you can mail them etc you can be anonymous so particularly for women when we first designed it we thought what would make women go on that they would feel safe and secure because you never know sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we, we had that in mind. And then after you've tried it, if you decide that you like it, you can buy a membership based on time. So you can buy everywhere from two weeks to a year. And a year's membership, to put it in perspective, it works out to about 30 cents a day. So it's really, really uh, cost effective to do it. And we will put in front of you tens of thousands of potential suitors for you. And it's up to you to go through and figure out who, and who do I like. Christian. It. They're all Christian now. It's like I'm, shopping, Melinda. Yeah, seriously, you just shop, shop. And choose who you want. <laughs> choose who you want. Wow, it's a bit like of an that. unromantic way yeah, to look exactly. at it. But it, along those unromantic lines, the way I look at it is, it's in many ways like looking for a job. Not to say that romance and looking for a job are the same thing, but um, you're putting it. You're not going to sit at your apartment by yourself and not put out resumes or not let friends and colleagues know that you're looking for work. So obviously. To me, make yourself available doesn't mean desperate. It just means putting yourself mm -hmm. out there. And one of the ways you can do that is through an online dating website like ChristianCafe.com. You know, I just think of it, it's an introduction service. Like for me, I, I go years without literally meeting a single man, Christian, my age. So it's just a, it's just a way to be introduced to people. That's mm -hmm. all it is. And there's lots of other yeah. ways too, and that's just one of them. And I know that your site has lots of testimonials. And in fact, we have some testimonials here on the show today. When we come back, we're going to hear from one of our own SOFA sisters who has personal experience with online dating, Denise Lottie Roberts and her new husband. They're going to join us via Skype right after this. Mary Beth Chapman and her family were devastated when their five-year-old adopted daughter, Maria, was tragically killed. In the midst of this horrific, horrific thing, it was so hard to have faith and to have hope. I didn't want to write just the book of the accident. I began to kind of look back at how none of my life has really gone the way that I planned it. I've had to choose to see my whole life story as God's plan. Choosing to See by Mary Beth Chapman is the Sofa Circle's Book of the Month. For $35 a month, you can join the Sofa Circle Membership Club in support of this program. We'll send you automatically our special gift of the month, our e-newsletter, and one of our Full Circle mugs. Sign up at FullCircleTV.com or with a special donation you can order Choosing to See by calling 1-877-327-7100. And if you missed the information on how you can join the Sofa Circle, just visit our website at fullcircletv.com. Well, we're back with ChristianCafe.com co-founder and president, Sam Moorcroft. Okay, Sam, there's a statistic that says 17%, last year, 17% of couples who got married actually met on online dating services. That's correct. Does and that sound right? It's totally correct. And in fact, half of all adults, or close to half of all adults in Canada and the U.S., are presently single. 
Really? Single, wow. yeah. divorced, widowed, yeah. I, I, was, I was blown away when I read that stat. Wow. So Cheryl, we know that actually online dating sites do work because we have a friend who made her, met her spouse there. We do, we have a very special friend, our own Denise Lottie, recently um, unfortunately left the couch, but we <laughs> had to bring her back with her new husband because she recently got married to a man she met on ChristianCafe.com. Denise and John, welcome to the show. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi guys. Woohoo, look we at this. We miss you, Denise, we miss you. And this is everybody's first chance I... to get a gander at your husband. Yes. I know, isn't he, isn't he hot? <laughs> Did you, did you choose him Hi, from the Anna, pictures? Cheryl, oh, yeah. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Girls, and I really miss being able to wear heels again. <laughs> oh, I need stretch your, pants. You get your hair and makeup done. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but John's worth it. He is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> exactly. So tell us a little bit of the story because you could give me credit if you want through along the way because, you know, you didn't want an internet date and I was the one giving you the little push. You've never really given me the credit I deserve, I feel. Oh, <laughs> oh so this is about you. Yes. No, but really just tell us the story of how you and John met. Well, no, you did actually, I will say you did inspire me because we know being single is not easy in today's world and you don't get the opportunity to meet men who are eligible that you would have a connection with and or have the time so i had you were starting to do the internet dating thing and i just thought it challenged me that you know i i had dissed it years ago but that i really needed to be open to this possibility or just to put myself out there it was more of an exercise to just say i'm you know looking for this so what was it? How did you and John connect? Tell us. Come on, tell us a love story. Oh, why don't you tell the story? John, you tell, well, yeah. On my end, I go to one of those small churches that <laughs> there was no single ladies uh, my age in the, uh, in the group. And so my cousin said, you have no choice. You got to go online. <laughs> and so I made a profile and went on there and, and uh, just was browsing those 10,000 people that Sam was just talking about and uh, came across this, this uh, good looking, intense uh, profile <laughs> type of person that very attractive and I just sent her, a, sent her a message and a few days later she messaged me back. And I hate to say this Sam, but we were one of those free trial couples so we actually both just signed on for the free trial just to see what it was like and that's when we found each other. Wow, so wow. You, you never even gave Sam any money, is what you're <laughs> no, saying. We need to give some money now. Publicity now, though. A big thank you to Sam. Yeah, well, Actually, hey. to Sam and John's cousin and Cheryl, really. It was a joint effort. Yeah, so, so, but what was it like then? Because I, I think a lot of people who've never tried it in their dating are wondering how, like he was in Montreal. People may not realize this. You were here yeah. in, um, in Niagara region. So how do you guys connect so far away? Like this on Skype. Uh, we had a Skype relationship. We we talked every night for at least an hour on Skype. Uh, sometimes we even did Skype dates where you can, you know, have dinner at the same time on, with candlelight and, and talk to one another like you're on a date. But it was challenging. I mean, and I think internet dating, you are probably going to have a lot of long distance relationships. But the, one of the benefits of them is that you can talk and you talk more than you probably would if you saw each other or lived in the same town and could just do quick dates here and there. So Denise and John, it's not a scary thing. So I think there, people still feel the stigma of it, but you really, um, it wasn't scary. It was easy. Like, what were your thoughts about that? Well, from my side, uh, I didn't necessarily know if I wanted to date, but to get to know someone, to get to know a Christian girl, and we started just by emailing, playing 20 questions. So I'd send uh, Denise a, a, mess, or a question each day, and then uh, she'd answer that question, and then she'd fire a question back at me, and we did this for three or four weeks before we even talked to each other, before we actually called each other on the phone. It was just an email, which is a very safe communication mm -hmm. form, uh, just a... Uh, email back and forth and everybody has their their um, name that they don't have to give addresses or any sort of uh, personal information just get to know the person and don't go in it expecting romance go in it expecting and looking for friendship and companionship 
Mm -hmm. Relationships are scary regardless of how you meet each other. I mean, opening your heart up to somebody, getting to know somebody, letting yourself be known is a scary process. But uh, what I liked about, you know, Christian Cafe is that they ask all of these questions on the profile. So you can, before you even make any communication, you can kind of see where this person's coming from, a little bit of what their own life, their life story is. And, and, and that, that also helps. And, you know, I have to say, Denise and I made up these, these things. When we go on dates with uh, guys for the first time, we public place, we met there, we didn't get picked up, they didn't know where we lived. And, but there, but we make sure that we'd call each other at a certain point during mm -hmm. the date. So if you don't hear from me by 9 o'clock, call the police or, you know, there's a problem. <laughs> so, you know, we just, we just find ways to make sure that we were safe. So, yeah. Denise, how did you know that he wasn't scary? Because I think a lot of women are concerned. They go out with yeah. a guy, like, what if he's a psycho? Mm -hmm. How did you well, know that John was Well, I hate to say, he's a, he, John is a teacher, so I know teachers have background checks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I knew he didn't have a criminal record. <laughs> so that was actually, I felt a little safer going in. I checked, I mean, I Googled him. I mean, I, I think my, my family Googled him. So just to make sure this, this, this was the man who, he was who he said he was journalistic dated and so yeah. <laughs> just well, I have one last question I don't sure. know no, go ahead. John you uh yeah. you guys decided to get married never having lived in the same city which some people might find like wow like how do you know you see each other day in and day out is different than just these dates and these vacations when you'd see each other so how did you guys make that decision without you know just wondering do I really know them well the thing is on at least on Christian Cafe you can put this uh, radius of uh of contact. So I think I had a 500 kilometer radius around where I was uh, located. And so Toronto, which is where our, essentially the West end of Toronto, where Denise was from, uh, I, I have a lot of family up there. We were up. So for me to drive six hours to Toronto, we did that. I did that for uh, every second weekend for almost a year. Uh, so we spent some quality time together uh, face to face and doing just very mundane things. And uh, once you know you can just enjoy the mundane things of life, uh, and we prayed together, we uh, met families, and, and it was just a very organic uh, connection as we grew together, and, and I just couldn't see myself living without this, uh, this woman, so <laughs> that's sort of how, how our story was. Love John, that. we love you, John. Oh, that's so oh. sweet. <laughs> Thank you guys so much Thanks. for coming on and, uh, and just telling us your story. And we, we miss you and we wish you the best. We're so happy for your new life together. Oh, I miss you guys too. And thank you, Sam, for this wonderful service. Why we exist. It's <laughs> stories like this that make it all worthwhile. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. 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 So, Sam, wow. the, whole, the whole security thing and, and safety thing, I know Cheryl brought that up, that you have to have accountability with a girlfriend or if you're meeting someone for the first time. What kind of safeguards do you have at ChristianCafe.com that kind of helps to uh, give me a measure of, of safety? We have a whole segment on safety tips. Everybody who joins gets a letter in their mailbox about how the site works and a whole extensive list of things to do. And the most common thing that we say is don't suspend common sense. Just because you're at home in the comfort of your own house talking to somebody, you have to remember this is a stranger and you just do the same thing you would do if you met them in person and you didn't know them. So public places. Yeah. Now there's a lot of you know internet dating sites, but the one thing I was reading about you is that you say it's Christian owned and operated. That right. makes you stand out among the rest is what you're saying it, and why 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 would that be well because we're operating it based on christian principles i grew up in the faith i'm a believer today i'm married but i was single i understand the market and i think it's very important in my personal view that i think christians should be matching christians i don't think we should let the world be doing that just like in the old days they said why does the devil have all the good music why should the devil have all the good matching i think that we christians are perfectly capable of doing it ourselves so that's one of the reasons that we make a big point of saying that we are christian owned and operated because who, who better to do it than people who were in that situation now and totally understand all the things that are really important for a believer, that you want to meet someone who loves Jesus, as opposed to, well, I'm nominally Christian. Well, if you're nominally Christian, presumably you'd be on another service. So that's why we exist for that specific market. 
And I like the fact that you, you don't remove the God element. In fact, you put it front and center. That's you right. say this is really, when you meet someone, especially someone as important as your future life mate, you really have to pray it through. You have mm -hmm. to be in tune with what God wants for your life individually. That's right. But then when you go and browse, I would imagine the different profiles on ChristianCafe.com, you would automatically be drawn maybe as you're praying it through, the, the Lord would draw you to people that would be of like mind and yes. like depth spiritually. We do it together. It's like the Lord and us, we do it, we walk together. You know, the way God walked with Adam in the garden and Eve before the fall. Well, God walks with us in this. It's not like the blind leading the blind. We have a creator who put us on this earth and the primary purpose for men and women um, beyond, like the second most important decision in life beyond a decision for Christ is a decision on based on who you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. And so who better to do that with than to trust God and on a Christian dating service which is designed specifically to help you meet that right someone for you. And I think I would say, you know, like, don't, I, I had a lot of men that I would talk to. I, I did Christian Cafe for a little while. I just didn't happen to meet my boyfriend there. But, but um, a lot of people would want to meet, like, right away. And I think, you know what? Give it some time. Like, email a little bit. Like, put in effort and, and get him to put in some effort. Because you're worth it as a woman for someone to put a little effort in. And get to know them first and wait till you're comfortable that you kind of know them. And, and, then, and then meet them, right? Like, Dating, well, it's not a, we live in a drive through culture. We want yeah, instant, exactly. instant everything with our microwave. We want to go to the drive through to get food. We want uh, dry cleaning done right away or photos in the old days before digital cameras. This is like something you're going to spend the rest of your life, like a person um, ideally, um, that you're going to meet. Well, why would you rush something like that? And, and any guy who wants to rush through something is not worth it well, yeah, and vice versa. I, you know, I found with my girlfriends though, because there was a fear, because a lot of my girlfriends, it's kind of scary putting yourself out there. Like you're, a lot of them aren't self promoters. So mm -hmm. for them to put a picture up that is sort is somewhat attractive or to write about yourself is really difficult. Like yes, I've had girlfriends say, can you write about me mm -hmm. for a site? Or can you give me some tips? Cause they don't know how to, you know, put them, express themselves or, you know, and so I think that's, that's a, that's a hard thing to do. And I think for women, it's, it's, it, the more conservative their, their Christian backgrounds, a lot of them will sit on the fence, as it were, and they want to make the, the guy to make the right move. And I think that works ideally. But just because you write to somebody doesn't mean that you're overstepping your bounds. If there's somebody, something that a guy's got in common with you, like a major interest, whatever it happens to be, there's nothing wrong with saying, wow, you're into X or you've been there. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't mean sit on the sidelines and wait. I say get out there. Because again, it comes back to that job analogy. It's not necessarily romantic, but if you're looking for a job, you don't stay at home in your apartment and pray for a job. You go out there and do mm -hmm. something and let the Lord guide you. And Absolutely. if you trust Him, I'm not saying that the perfect someone's on our website, but they could be. Yeah. And let yeah. God be the leader yeah. and go together with Him and let Him introduce you to that right person that He has I for you. I like that, good. Sam, because really, ultimately, the most important relationship that any of us are involved in is not horizontally, it's vertically. It's with God. It's knowing Him personally and getting in tune with His plan for our lives. And I just want to encourage you that if you're going through something right now or if you're just saying, I don't have any direction in my life, our prayer line is available 24-7. We'd love to talk with you and pray with you and introduce you to the one who loves you the most and who will direct your life if you'll only invite him to. Well, Sam, thank you for being with us. Thanks ChristianCafe.com <laughs> again. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being with us on Full Circle as always. Keep your eyes on Jesus. It's all about him. You complete the circle. To send us your questions or comments, email us at fullcircle at crossroads.ca or interact with us on Facebook. You can also write to us at Full Circle, Box 5100, Burlington, Ontario, L7R4M2, or in the U.S., P.O. Box 486, Niagara Falls, New York, 14302. You can watch more episodes of the show at fullcircletv.com. Your support helps to make Full Circle possible. And all donors receive access to our e-newsletter filled with spiritual insights, blogs by the Sofa Sisters, devotionals, recipes, and more. To help, please call 1-877-327-7100.